Hello. Welcome to Poland, your one-stop shop for everything EA related. Here's what's coming up on the show. Celebrities and footballers unleash their inner tiger as they try to make par in their very own masters. Comedian Rob Heaney joins us in the studio to talk about The Sims. We peruse the pages of the Dead Space salvage graphic novel with artist Christopher Shy. And Don of the Drift, Darren McNamara shows us his new car. It's not a Prius. First of all, if you're looking forward to Battlefield 3, you may have caught the TV debut and want to see more. Well, now you can, thanks to a brand new 12 minute long trailer. This extended trailer features footage from the online Fault Line episodes and previously unseen gameplay. As Sergeant Black and his team of US Marines sneak across rooftops, disarm a homemade bomb, and fight through hostile streets. You can see the full 12 minute trailer at battlefield.com forward slash UK. The third SSX Deadly Descents blog is out now. The EA Sports team over in Vancouver have already given us an overview of the game and explained the physics in previous blogs, and now it's time to talk level design. Here's a sneaky peek. Hi, I'm Dave Taylor, Wells Art Director on the new SSX. I'm here in the uh, Wells department where everyone's working pretty hard and making a new game. So this is where it all begins. Uh, the level design begins up here with our brief. Uh, this is what we define to be the whole SSX experience. And here we have our concept artist who's managed to replicate what we feel to be the iconic uh, exaggeration that we're looking for in our game. And you can see the full SSX blog at ea.com forward slash UK. Now the Masters has already been and gone, but of course you can replay the tournament on the greens of Augusta in Tiger Woods PGA Tour 12. Maybe Rory McIlroy should get a copy. Maybe he should. Anyway, with all this golfing action going on, we decided to get on the fairway and get a little coverage of our own. The new Tiger game is out now, so cover the Masters, they said. So here we are in Watford. Now bear with me, I know the Masters are held in Augusta, but we've got our own little Masters going on right here. Celebrities and sports stars hit the course at the Grove for EA Sports Tiger 12 Bizarre Masters. We caught up with The Sun's showbiz editor and asked him about the prize on offer. The prestigious EA Sports Tiger 12 Bizarre Masters Blazer in now, association with The Sun. Look at that. Now look at this tartan, this is nice. What clan's this from then? That's the Matalan tartan. Now you won this last time, didn't you, with uh, with Gordon? With Gordon, yeah. yeah. Now he can't play today. Who have you partnered, partnered up with? I'm with the uh, England legend, Les Ferdinand, and uh, Ian Wright. It's the England Strike Force. So Ian, how's it going for you today? To be honest, it started pretty well. Me and Vernon started on the first of um, birdies. Nice temporary, but it was um, a brilliant shot. Um, Vernon played a great shot in that, and I was lucky I, I sunk one from off the green. Like that, Ooh. I like it. That's the way we like it. Oh, oh, baby! That's what you want. <laughs> Ian, that was amazing. You happy with that? Well, yeah. That's that's the how so I'm rolling at the moment. You know, that's no surprise to me. What was a surprise was some people's handicaps on the day. Les Ferdinand had his doubts about Vernon's. I must be honest, I don't remember him being an 18. And he won last time. This uh, this event happened last year. Did he uh, win it? He had the tartan jacket. Does that annoy you? He's got it. He didn't bring didn't, it today. I didn't know that. He didn't bring it today because he didn't so want to give it back. I was going to say, obviously, he's not handing it over to anybody. Yeah. I don't want to give my jacket to anyone, so I left it at home. It's already there in a frame, and I'm not going to hand it over. After a tough day on the greens, the gallant contenders made their way to the 19th hole, where the real competition took place on Tiger Woods PGA Tour 12. Vernon, Ian, and Les were joined by Theo from Hertz to compete on the 12th hole of Augusta. <laughs> In the drink. <laughs> After a little help with the controls, Les Ferdinand putted first to win the Tiger Challenge. All that remained was to crown the winners of the EA Sports Bizarre Masters. Max Rushton and Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> In the absence of Vernon's jacket, the winners had to make do with tartan waistcoats instead. Those golf buggies look like fun, Matt. Yeah, they are fun. They're quite easy to drive, but I'm always quite scared they're going to tip over. Well, they're not that easy to drive, are they? We've got our own little masters going on right here. I'm in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least there wasn't anyone behind me, not like that time in my car. Terrible business. Right, now it's time for our pwn computer to attempt a bit of cyber with EAPR guru John Goddard. Identify yourself. 
Hi, I'm John Goddard, Senior Manager, International PR, EA Games. Please press my button for your first question. What is your biggest gaming achievement? Well, recently, while playing Crisis 2, I managed to get up to uh, number 39,000 on the global leaderboard, uh, which I'm extremely, extremely proud of. Do you work out? Uh, I work out sums, um, long division, uh, multiplication, things like that, uh, the occasional quadratic equation. Uh, but uh, if you mean work out in a, in a sort of physical sense of the word, um, uh, no, not really. Where are you from? I'm from London, North West London, uh, born and raised. Are they all as handsome as you in London? Um, I'd say there were five or six uh, who were. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, they've all moved away, so uh, I'm, I'm probably the best that's left. Thank you, Giza. My pleasure. She's getting a little bit too friendly for my liking. Yeah, it's a good job we haven't installed Flash on her. Anyway, moving on, we've got comedian Rob Heaney in the studio with us. Hello, Woo! Oh. Hi Rob, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me guys. Now Rob is comedy writer for The Sims and recently he's been involved in the Royal Wedding parody video. Here's a clip. So Rob, quite a sequence of events there. Is that how you expect the Royal Wedding to happen? I don't think it'll be quite like that, no. For a start, I don't think Prince Harry will be driving himself. Well, no, hopefully not. <laughs> not in a purple car. I don't know what car that was. but Topless, it was a, like, topless on fire, yeah, um, girlfriend with a towel around her as well. For a start, you can never go that fast in central London. Well, that's very true. And his legs looked a little bit wobbly as well. Is it, are we suggesting something else going on there? I, I didn't write his legs. <laughs> 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 They're just the character's legs. It's a good question. How do you write for something that doesn't have any words? It's really hard. I've never done it before. I'm, I'm used to writing dialogue or jokes for people. I've never actually written anything visual. So I guess, I don't know, I kind of got on a roll with it. I started playing The Sims a little bit. I started kind of watching all the videos of seeing what they could do. And very quickly you realise that a computer animated character doing anything you wouldn't expect them to do is already quite funny. Yeah. And I guess working with the royal family, you've got a lot of characters to work with already there, haven't you? Yeah, but you do have to be a bit careful there. You can't, I mean, it's all right saying, you know, Prince Harry's got his wag and he's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a playboy, but yeah, I didn't want to go too far and say anything that gets us into trouble. I'm sure there must have been some scenes you had to get rid of. Well, I was told, my brief was, just write it and don't restrict yourself, let us do that. So yeah, there was a, there was a lot of stuff that I wrote that, that didn't make it in there, but... Have you got quite a dark sense of humour? Well, that's the whole point of The Sims, isn't it? The whole Sims philosophy seems to be a very dark kind of sense <laughs> yeah, of humour. Yeah, it's very dark. I mean, I, I think we've tried killing our Sims before, haven't yes, we? Yes, it's harder than it looks trying to yeah, kill yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy, but I, I made them make them fat and then <laughs> starve them to death. That's it takes amazing. a while, but it's worth it. That's really weird. That's a new format for a diet programme, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, for people that might not recognise your face, you're actually, you know, a bit of an underdog, really, because you're writing all this amazing script work and other comedians are basically taking all the glory, aren't they? Honestly, when I tell people some of the shows I've written on, people get really upset because they go, no, they come up with it all themselves. But you're not going to out anyone here, are you? No, so I'm not, like not going to say any names of anyone who I've written for. And can I just add, by the way, Go on. that a lot of the time, the reason people use writers, because I know people get upset about it, it's not because they can't write themselves, it's just they're so busy, they just haven't got the time to do it. So what about your comedy in general, what's coming up for you? Well, it's really exciting, I'm about to do, I'm part of a 22-day uh, tour for a, a national tour for a drinks company who can't be named right now. <laughs> so that's really exciting. And then I've been approached by Jibber Jabber Pods to do another podcast where I'm going to be interviewing comedians. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that in the next couple of months starting that. So I'm really, really excited about that, actually. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, good luck with it. Dead Space 2 has already done a decent job of scaring the pants off most people that played it on console and PC, but the Dead Space universe has expanded far beyond just gaming. That's right, so Matt caught up with Christopher Shy to ask him about his artwork in the Dead Space Salvage graphic novel. So Christopher, how did you get involved with doing the artwork for Dead Space Salvage? Well, Kate Latchford was actually a good friend of mine and a, and a fan of the artwork before we started. She actually had seen my art book and um, she actually proposed the idea of me doing Dead Space uh, Salvage. And had you heard of the game before? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I'd actually played it, and I really liked it a lot. 
And so I asked her, I said, look, if there's any possibility that we could do this graphic novel, I'd really love to have the opportunity to do it. Very quickly, could you just explain to me the rough plot behind the novel? Well, it involves a group of magpies, uh, which are miners in space in, a, in an asteroid belt who are basically mining precious ores when they run across the Ishimura. They board it, and then all hell breaks loose. And a similar thing happened to Isaac, didn't it? I mean, how, what are the parallels between Isaac's story and the story of the magpies? Isaac was running a rescue mission. He was part of that. With the magpies, they really aren't looking at rescue. They don't think that there's anybody on board the Ishimura. Uh, they, they assume it's a derelict ship. So when they board it, they're looking at more just kind of salvaging the ship and selling it. They have no idea what's in store for them. There's a lot of horrors in store, I can tell you. Now, Anthony Johnston wrote the novel itself. How do you go about working with a writer? Do you work really closely together? Initially, I received the script from him, read through it. Uh, we had at least one phone meeting where I kind of talked to him about my ideas and where we wanted to go with it. But I, I got to say that I think that his script was perfect from the get-go, so I, I really didn't see that there was, there was anything that I really needed to change. It's a very different look to Dead Space, the game itself. Where do you get your inspirations from? I mean, there was a temptation to kind of look at the game and say, well, look, everything that they've done is really a lot better than anything that I could do, but I was really trying to put my own stamp on it. And how do you actually go about drawing those fantastic images? What do you use? Well, it's kind of a mixed media process. Process. About half of it is done digitally, about half of it is done hand-drawn, and then I actually build all of the miniatures, like the spaceships and things like that, and I photograph them and I bring them in and I scan them. So, and essentially what we're trying to do is go with something that's much more film-like. So doing the art for this graphic novel, was it very different to what you've done in the past? I think that the difference between this graphic novel and graphic novels that I'd done before is that I was really passionate about the project to begin with. I really, really liked the game. It scared the hell out of me, and it was definitely one of the games that I looked at and said, you know, They've done it better than anything that I can do before. The only thing that I can do is kind of take it in a different direction. And how long does it take you to, to get one of these novels made? Usually between about six and eight months. And I think this one actually came in around eight months and a half because we ended up adding about 22 extra pages to it. A lot of what Anthony Johnson had done was so epic that I kind of felt like we were trying to compress it with the page count that we had. So I just kind of decided, let's expand this. Let's kind of give him room. Let's see what we can do. And if a new one is written, would you love to do the art for that? Oh, absolutely. If they wrote six of them, I would do them. So Christopher, what's next for you? Well, actually, I, I think the next project that we're doing is Dead Space 2, but I can't announce it yet. I can't, I can't say it. <laughs> we always get exclusives here on Pwn. Christopher, thanks a lot. Some pleasant bedtime reading for the kids there. It's not. Right, moving on. Shift 2 Unleash has been getting everybody in a spin, but recently EA let a select few have a go for real at an event in Dublin. I picked the brains of professional drift driver Darren D. Mac McNamara. <laughs> how street am I, Sean? Bold. <laughs> About how drifting in the game compares to real life. So Darren, do you often spend your days burning rubber around runways in Dublin airports? No, this is uh, pretty unique for me. Uh, I burn rubber all over the world with these uh, drift cars, but never on an airport. So what are we doing here today? Uh, we're launching the Shift 2 Unleashed computer game, and uh, we brought out the BMAC 86 Corolla, and uh, we're just having fun. <laughs> Now you've got some guys teaching the guys there. Mm -hmm. What sort of skills do they need to have in order to be able to drift a car? Well, I think you're either a natural or not. You're either born with it. It's a, it's a kind of a feel thing. It's a balance thing, you know. But um, they'll be teaching how to handbrake properly, counter steer and power over steer and things like that. What's the deal with this car? Because it's quite a special car, isn't it? We removed as much of it as we can. We have a um, two rotor 500 horsepower engine in it. It's, it's pretty special. Every single thing has been modified. And, it's pretty unique, it's a it's really special car, it should attract a lot of attention for both us and the game. So you're part of EA's racing team, Team Need for Speed, can you just mm. tell us a bit about that? Glad to be part of it, I'm the kind of European representative at this side, there's um, two cars in America, another one based out of Norway, so they, they like to promote drifting, you know, they want that kind of youth culture, it's kind of the computer game, kind of energy drink culture, so yeah, we got involved and uh, it's, it's great to be doing things like this. And talking about the game, you played it yourself, I guess? I have, yeah. I'm big into games. Um, I actually refused to buy a steering wheel for my PlayStation <laughs> until I finished the car. Otherwise, we would not be here. So, uh, yeah, big into games and hopefully looking to get some downtime in play. Somewhere. How does it compare to really drifting in a real car? 
it is quite easy for someone like me who does this kind of thing to pick it up and actually do quite well straight off the bat. And what's your favourite car in the game? Come on, it's gotta be this one. This is my favourite car in the world right now. So when you're drifting, you're pushing the car to the limits. Have you broken a few cars? You crash all the time, you know, the object is to scrape the wall at 80 miles an hour. It takes one inch the wrong direction to be in the wall, so... <laughs> That's right. Those things happen. A little bit too much brake, the car is sideways. Not enough brake, gonna fly off the apex. So, that fine line is knowing how far you can push and pushing it there. Drifting on the track looks fun. It feels fun when you're in the car. Mm. Are there any actual practical applications? It is great to do a course like this and learn what the car is going to do if the worst does happen. So it's a, it's, a, it's a car control thing and a lot of people should do an advanced driving course just to, just to make people safer on the road. Really. So coming back to the game, you're playing Shift 2 Unleashed, you're out of control. What's a tip for anyone out there playing the game? Drifting is a weird sport. I mean, you're already out of control all the time. So if things are gone bad, pretty much just press the brake and close your eyes. It's all over. <laughs> Wow, Matt, those donuts look pretty cool. Yeah, but just look at how brave our cameraman Pete was to get that shot. <laughs> Potential health and safety issues there, I would have thought. Check Pete out. He's a bit mental, isn't he? He'll do anything to get the shot. Recently, he almost got more by rabid dog. Thank God he's not working on the Katie Price show anymore. Guys, that's it for another show. Remember, if you want to subscribe to us, you can do so by clicking on this yellow subscribe box somewhere here-ish. It's not an exact science. Thanks to everybody that gets involved. We do read your comments, all your comments, and you can email us at pwned.ea.com. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash electronic arts. Or you can go on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash electronic arts UK. We will be back next month, the month of May. Bye. Bye.